Hi everybody, this is the second part of my uh, mm, beginner course on the Maltese language and uh, again I would like to emphasize that I am not a Maltese teacher and I'm not a Maltese national. Um, I have been learning the language for two years and I think I'm pretty good at it, but please do not treat this course or me as an authority on the language. This is more of a learner to learner and uh, unlike official courses I want to focus on uh, uh, English speakers and in a way the similarities between the English language uh, and the Maltese language and the differences between the languages uh, so that it, it, it makes it easier for you to to figure out how to learn it but I do recommend that you actually go to an official course and learn this from scratch and um, this is accompanied by my Memrise deck which is based on the official lifelong learning course that I took to MQF1 um, so please use the two in conjunction so that you can actually practice uh, the stuff that I'm talking about here. So the second lesson uh, I would like to, in the second lesson I would like to focus on articles because this is a very important aspect of the Maltese language, one of the first aspects that you should learn and again I would like to um, perceive this as uh, similarities and differences between English and uh, uh, and Maltese in this respect. So, um, just like English, uh, Maltese has definite articles, but it does not have an indefinite article. Meaning, in Maltese, when you want to say a house, you just say dar. When you want to say the house, you say iddar. Uh, there's also a bit of a difference in how you use the indefinite and the definite article in Maltese, uh, because the definite article is more common than in English. Meaning you skip the article rarely, you skip it in a case when you want to emphasize that something is not actually defined. So, for example, uh, any house. Dar would be more like any house than a house. Uh, it's really very hard to explain this and uh, there are like no very fixed rules about this, so you just basically have to learn it. But don't be afraid of using articles in Maltese and actually use them more often than not unless in certain cases when you never use articles and that is when you have a definition of ownership of the noun because in Maltese uh, you have suffixes that uh, define in a way ownership uh, of the noun so for example if you have dar, dar so a house uh, you can say dari, which means my house. And when you have that suffix, you never use the article. So there is no it dari. There is just dari always. That's one thing to remember. Also in Maltese, articles can be used along with uh, adjectives. And they're often used along with adjectives. Adjectives in Maltese of, uh, are always after the noun. So, for example, in English you would have a, a white house. No, 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 I'm not talking about the white house in Washington, but it's a house and it's white. In Malta that doesn't really happen. All of them are kind of sand colored. Uh, but if you have a white house, you would in Maltese, and you want to say the house which is white, you would say the house, the white. Et dar la biad. Dar is masculine, I think, or um, I'm I'm f I'm not sure right now if dar is masculine. I think it is. Uh, so I might be making a mistake here. But let's say, for example, uh, car carrozza. So you would say a white car 
the white car, il carrozza, il baida. So you use the article for both. So these are the differences uh, in the usage of articles. Now about the construction of the articles. Because you, well, if you see written Maltese, you see them all over the place, right? But you might be confused because uh, the most common one is il. Il with a dash. Now important. Some people make mistakes. It's always a dash. An article is always with a dash. There is no ill space something. No way. That's a mistake. There is no ill apostrophe something. No way. That's a mistake. It's always ill dash something. That's the base article, the most common one. But sometimes you have just an L. Sometimes you have itch or in or ish. Right? Sometimes you have a n dash something or uh, sh dash something and like what's going on what's going on okay the rules are actually super super simple it's not feminine it's not masculine that does not matter whether the noun or the adjective is feminine feminine or masculine the important thing is which letter does the word start with and which letter does the previous word end with? Let's start with the more important thing. So which letter does the word start with? There are obviously consonants and vowels. Now, in uh, case of consonants in Maltese, you have two types of consonants. They're called moon consonants and sun consonants. Moon consonants, consonanti amrin, and sun consonants, consonanti shemshin. The uh, moon consonants, consonanti amrin, are more common, and most of the consonants are moon consonants. All moon consonants basically take the il uh, article. So it's like amrin. Q is a moon consonant, like Amar, which is uh, moon. So the moon would be il dash Amar, il Amar, right? Or K is another moon consonant, so it would be il carrozza. But there are nine, nine consonants, and those you have to learn, those you have to remember, which are called the sun consonants. And those consonants change the article, meaning the L in the article changes into the consonant. And these are CH, D, N, R, S, T, SH, Z, C. Those nine. You have to remember this. And uh, what happens? For example, CH, CHAVETTA. Key. Instead of il, you use the same consonant as the word starts with. So it's ch. It chavetta. All right. It's uh, horse. Horse is zimel. So you use you use is zimel. And uh, even uh, the sun shemsh. Ish shemsh. Simple. It's really super simple. Okay, so now we got the consonants. There is one very special consonant here. Well, actually two. As you remember from the previous lesson, two consonants are not pronounced. And it's the ein, which is the G and H with the bar across it. And the akka, which is the regular H without the bar. Now those two are treated just like vowels because they're not pronounced. And that means that they're followed by a vowel after it. Now, uh, what happens if you have a vowel at the beginning of, uh, of the word? For example, floor, art, floor or ground. You just use L dash. And 
since this is a vowel, there are no consonanti shemshin or amrin. It's always l. L dash art, right? Lart. Uh, the i is ein, g h the silent consonant, a j n. So it's l dash ein, line, right? So it's the same with the ein and aka and all the vowels. Now, third rule about consonants, because sometimes you might see cases where you have uh, L dash and the word begins with a consonant, right? Or sh dash, like sh shemsh. Why would that happen? Now, notice what the word before it is. If the word before ends with a consonant, then you always use the full article, il, ish, itch, whatever. But if the previous word ends with a vowel, you drop the vowel from the consonant. Uh, so, for example, if I want to say, I see the house, nara is I see, n-a-r-a, -A, ends with a vowel. Normally, the house is iddar, right? But nara, the, the way you write it, you write nara d dash dar, not iddar, never, never, you never allow two vowels to be next to one another in the words one next to one another. All right, there might be. There might be some exceptions to this because some words don't uh, are not Semitic, but in Semitic words, that never happens. So basically, the interesting thing is though, you still pronounce it. You write Nara the Dar, but you pronounce it Nara it Dar. That is a bit difficult to remember because you see something different and you pronounce something that is not seen. But that's probably the only difficulty about uh, Maltese consonants. Uh, sorry, not consonants, I mean Maltese articles. So basically, to summarize the lesson, uh, use them often. Be ready to use them with adjectives as well. And uh, the way that they're constructed is uh, Mm, because of word, what words are next to it. Wait a second, I forgot one case. Before we do the summary, there is yet another case where the article is, is very atypical, okay? Now we have to introduce you, I have to introduce you to another group of consonants. These are called liquid consonants, consonanti liquidi which are L, M, N, and R. So in Maltese, L, M, N, R. Those four consonants, if they're at the beginning of the word, th these, as, as you notice, they're, no, they're all Amrin, right? L, M, N, and R are not, sh mm, yes, or Amrin. So they normally take L. So for example, with an L, if you have a word like pencil, lapis, you write it normally, il lapis. But if the word starts with two consonants and the first one is liquidy, so l, m, n, or r, and there are two consonants, then everything changes. What happens then is you add an i e at the beginning of the word and you have an l dash article so the article began becomes l dash i not il dash it's like the, the i comes from one side to the other um trying to remember some examples at the moment because this happens with all the liquid consonants le m n r again if the word begins with two consonants only 
Now, if, there is a, if the second letter is a vowel, it, this does not apply. And it also happens in s most combinations when you have an S with another letter. And that would be S P, S K, S T. I can't remember all of them. I'm sorry, you would have to <laughs> uh, look it up. But some very popular examples. Sptar is hospital. S P T A R, right? You don't have is sptar. Like, I mean, imagine even trying to pronounce it. Is sptar. It's too much, okay? In this case, you get the L dash I. Even though S, even though it's S, which is one of the um, sun consonants, so it should be is, right? It's not S dos, uh, S dash I, it's L dash I. So you have Lisptar, L dash Isptar. You add the I at the beginning. Scola, school, Liscola, same thing, okay? So this is the last rule uh, that might be difficult. So to summarize again, use them often, uh, and uh, they only they don't depend on the gender of the word. They only depend on the uh, on the letter that the word begins with and the letter that the other uh, that the previous word ends with. Now, important directly previous word. If a previous word ends and then you have a period or you have a comma or you have anything else like that, no, 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 no. Then you you treat it as if it didn't exist, if it's, for example, from a previous sentence. Then you begin the next sentence, even if the previous sentence ends with a vowel, you also begin it with a vowel. It's only when the two words are right next to one another, all right? Okay, so, again, uh, to remind you the sun consonants and the moon consonants, the mm, sun consonants are ch, d, n, R, S, T, Sh, Z, Z, Sh, Z, Z, sorry, the, the order of the alphabet, actually. Uh, and the consonant liquidity, the ones when they appear as the first one of two consonants, are L, M, N, R, and combination of S, K, S, T, and some other, and, and very often, basically, when an S, uh, is with another consonant. I'm sorry, I should look into my uh, uh, notebook and find all the combinations, but since I'm doing this, you know, kind of like I have an inspiration in doing this, so please forgive me for not going through every single rule in detail, because this is not what this course is about. This is about explaining to you the basics. You still have to take an official course to learn all the, you know, little details of, of the language itself. But at least this should explain to you the the whole uh, matter of uh, using articles in Maltese. Well, enjoy. Hope this helped. And uh, uh, next lesson soon, I hope. <laughs>